Yeah, I think we we'll started recording now. Hopefully the mic is working. Oh, I think it's working. Okay, great. So, so here, guys, I told you chapter one. In, in the first chapter, chapter, I want to give you some information uh, on your program, your master program, and also I'm going to talk about PhD program. Okay, so. Uh, what are the requirements you have to do? What are the milestones, okay, to get uh, your degree? So I think last time I finished everything here until PhD, okay? Any questions? Do you have any questions here? Okay. So let's see the... I know maybe uh, all of you are not PhD students, but or maybe you, some of you are direct PhD. I don't know, but, uh, but anyway, I think it's a good idea to also to explain a PhD program. Uh, because if you decide to go for PhD, you're not going to have a chance to have a course like this one for PhD. So it's good to have the information now, okay? Anyway, so for the PhD program, this, are, this is from the catalog. Uh, you can see these are the learning objectives. Number one, the objectives of the program is the student should demonstrate breadth, breadth, breadth of knowledge in the uh, discipline and the depth in scientific area of his or her research topic, okay? The student should get experience in doing in independent academic work and research, okay? So I can tell you quickly, uh, and you, you notice it now, the main difference between master and PhD program is the research component. The research component is much bigger here than the master program, okay? The expectation from research is much bigger here, okay? So the student should demonstrate his or her ability to identify and define the research topic, okay? The research work performed by the student should contribute to the existing knowledge in the engineering field, okay? This is also a very important thing. So again, uh, I want you to understand what is the difference between teaching and research and how they are connected, okay? This is how it is. First, we have to do research, we have to gain knowledge. Okay, so the knowledge we have should come from research, okay? And then when I teach this knowledge, that's what we call teaching, you know what I'm saying? So teaching should use the outcome of the research and teach it to the people to understand, okay? That's why research is very important. We have always to look for new knowledge. We have to look always for new, uh, new stuff, okay, that can uh, help us. Uh, So oh, that's why we can say here, it has to contribute to the knowledge. You understand what I mean by the knowledge? Because research, the objective of the research is to gain knowledge. You got a new knowledge, something something we don't know. And after we do research, for example, I wanna, I wanna find a um, cure or medication for a certain disease, okay? So before I do research, I don't know how, what, what should be medication, right? So what, what, what should be the material or what? How can I treat uh, this uh, this disease? Okay, but after I do research, now I, I came up with a formula. If you put this material with this material and give the patient this uh, doses at this this time, so this knowledge will gain the knowledge. You got what I'm saying? So this is the objective of research is to gain knowledge. Okay, as a student should demonstrate the ability to clearly communicate complex engineering and research topics in both verbal and written form. The last one also is very important. Uh, communication here can be verbal or can be written. Written, when you write your thesis, oh, this also should be objective in, um, in in the master as well. You should write a research paper. You should write your thesis. Okay, so this is a kind of communication, written communication. Uh, for sure, you should, you know, uh, the way we write, is, uh, we call it technical writing, right? So we, we're not gonna write, we're not like, we're not gonna write literature or a story Right, it's the technical writing. Okay, so uh, also for verbal verbal communication, uh, when you go when you publish a paper, you go to a conference, you explain your idea to uh, to ex experts in, in in this area. Okay, so this is a verbal communication. Same thing when you do your defense, master defense or PhD defense. Um, now I want to talk about requirement. What are the requirements? 
we have two cases. The first case, if you have a master degree, so we have two cases. The first case, a student admitted with a master degree, okay? And it has to be thesis master degree, not non-thesis, okay? Second case, if a student admitted directly from bachelor degree to PhD degree. So let's talk about the first one. If you are a student, or if you already finished your master degree and you decide to go for PhD, the requirement, the minimum requirement should be 48 credit hours. Okay, this is the minimum. You can take more, but this is the minimum. This 48 credit hour should include, number one, a minimum of 18 credit hour, of course, work. So minimum, you have to take 18, 18, 18 course work. Is that okay? Uh, 18 credit hours. Uh, so this is, should be six courses. Okay. But there are some requirements here. This course, uh, six courses, number one, 5,000 are not counted. No 5,000. So 5,000 are not counted. 5,000 are counted in the master, right? And there is a limit too, right? But here, 5,000 are not counted. This is number one, okay? Number two, you have to take at least, at least two 7,000 courses, okay? So you should take at least seven, two, two 7,000 courses at least, okay? So this is 18, and then you have to take 24 of, of uh, research hours. This is hours, okay? In, in master, this, this was only six, six credit hours. Here it has to be 24, okay? And you have you have to write a dissertation. This dissertation should build upon the student course of study and has to make a significant contribution to the state of knowledge. And um, also no more than nine credit hours may be earned in, in a particular semester. So you should not, in one semester, you should not take more than nine credit hours, okay? So, so so now I talked about 18 and 24. Still, there are six hours missing, right? To make the 48 hours. So six hours are missing. These six hours, you have the option either here, either you, you can take uh, two courses, grad level courses, okay? Or, or you can do research experience as the police of the department, okay? So there are six hours. These six hours you can. Uh, you have the option, uh, depends on the department, I know it or not, but you have the option, uh, you, can, you, can, you can take them courses, two courses, or you can do research, okay? Uh, same thing like PhD, uh, sorry, like master, exactly same thing, you have to make a program of study, right? Uh, last time I talked about program of study, you have to do, do it by next semester, program of study, okay? In this program of study, you have to tell who is your advisor, you have to tell what classes you are gonna take, and to when you are gonna graduate, okay? Uh, there are other conditions here, I wanna go through them quickly. Residence, residence of four semesters beyond the master degree with at least two semester in continuous resid residence is required, okay? Uh, resident means you have to be here, stay here, okay? You have to be full time here. Um, you have to keep at least three, average of three, uh, your GBA. For uh, you, you are gonna take uh, you, your GPA is gonna count on, on classes, the, the courses you will take. The research hours, I told you, you have to take uh, credit hours, research hours. These research hours don't have a grade, okay? It's just 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 uh, uh, pass or don't pass. That's it, okay? So if you don't pass, it means they are not gonna be counted. So they are not gonna be a part of the GPA. Uh, all, all requirements should be done within no more than eight years. Okay, for sure, most of the students finish. Uh, maybe for part-time students, they may, may need to take more time, but no one finishing. Eight years is too long time, okay? Unless he's full-time student, he was busy, he or she was busy in something else, but usually most of the students between three to five years, okay? This is four years, this is the range, okay? Um, all students in the program must follow a plan of study, a program of study and research developed uh, develop in conjunction, conjunction with an uh, ad, adversary committee, satisfactory complete. Also, it's also one of the things is that you don't need to do in the master, but you have to do in the PhD. In the PhD, you have to do something called comprehensive exam. Okay? So what I mean, what usually uh, should, should, this should be done before the defense. So, this is a, so the first milestone for you is a comprehensive exam. Next one is the defense, okay? So what should you do in the comprehensive exam? Uh, the comprehensive exam should have two parts. 
written part, written part, I should have a presentation or oral, oral, oral part, okay? In the written part, uh, after you make, after you form your committee, you uh, uh, advise the committee, uh, you can get some questions for, from them, okay? And then the format of this written exam is left, is, is left to the committee members. So they, for example, one of the committee member, maybe uh, you took a course with, with him, okay? And then he decide to give you some question related to this course, okay? Someone can ask you to do like a survey or to solve for something, okay? Uh, usually it's a take home exam, but if someone wants to, to, to ex uh, examine you in a fixed time, it's not take home, he can do that, okay? So it's, the details are left to the committee, but there should be some written part exam. And then, the, after you pass this written part exam, you should uh, you should make a presentation for your research, okay? Just to tell the committee, I finished this part of my, this is this is my plan, okay? This is the problem I'm gonna study in my, you need to define your problem in your PGE. You, you, it's better if you really finish finish some part test and you will have some presentation. It's not required, some, some papers, it's not required, but it's better, okay? So if you finish something, you tell the committee, yeah, I already finished this part. In the future, I'm going to work on this part. So it's like you make a plan with the committee members uh, about you. For sure, this is different from this, uh, from defense because in the defense, you already finished the work. So you, 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 you explain the work you already done. But here, you, you are explaining something you are going to do in the future. So I'm going to work in this area. I'm going to study this problem. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's better if you already finish something, okay? So that at, at least when you finish something, at least anything you are gonna say, you are gonna be confident, okay? It's gonna be like solid presentation because you already know it's not imagination. You are imagining something. No, you already did something and you already, the left, what is left in the thesis, you can do it in the future. Or you know how to do it, okay? Anyway, after you pass, so when you do the comprehensive exam, the committee member has to come, you have to make a presentation similar to the defense and then if you pass, they are gonna sign on the paperwork and then you are gonna move, you are gonna be moved from PhD student to PhD candidate, candidate, okay? The second one, if you are, if I have a bachelor degree and you wanna go for, for PhD directly without doing master, okay? So a student admitted with, with a bachelor de de degree On exceptional basis, uh, must successfully complete a qualifying exam. So, in order to allow you to, to go from bachelor to PhD, you have to do what we call qualifying exam. In this exam, uh, they, they test you, they give you, I think, four, four or five courses on uh, undergrad courses, okay, and then they give you a test, this test for, uh, I think, four hours, and then you have, uh, you have, I think, not to get around 70 percent something like that it's going to be a written exam okay uh, if you pass this exam so you can go for phd directly okay if you fail you can try again so i think you have to try it something like that based mostly so here you have to complete a qualifying exam based mostly on undergraduate material uh, before the end of the second semester the process should include at a minimum an examination of the students fundam fundamental knowledge okay the student with a bachelor degree from an EBIT accredited program are ex exempted from this examination. Honestly, <laughs> I should I shouldn't say this, but honestly, that's what I read in the catalog. That's what's written in the policy, but we don't do that. Honestly, so I know some of our graduates, TTU graduates, that we we ask them to do this. Course. I don't know why, but if, if I were you, if you if this is your case, if you were someone of you with private PhD. You have to talk to the department about this because it's not what's written. I, I got it from the policy. It doesn't say policy. So here, if you really have a bunch of degree from here, you should, but you don't do it. I don't know why. It's not me. I don't know why, but anyway. Uh, so uh, maybe if there's a chance, I'm going to talk to the chair about this. But anyway. Okay. Uh, based on the student's performance on the qualified exam, so one of the three actions should be taken. Number one, permitted to continue on PhD, a doctor PhD program, so it can allow you to do PhD, or advice to transfer to a master degree program, okay? 
uh, so you go to master degree. Number three, recommended for termination from the grad program. I think this is very rare to happen. Okay. So one more thing, I want. I'm gonna show you what is the difference if if you do master first and then you decide to go for PhD or you do di di direct PhD. So what will be the difference? The only difference you will see now in the credit hours, it's the same number of credit hours. The only difference is you are, you can, I think you can save, you will see now the thesis. You don't need to do master thesis and PhD thesis. Only one PhD thesis. You got what I'm saying? And I think, let me see. You will see now, okay? It permitted to continue in, uh, so I told you before, if you, if you are doing PhD, you need to 48. If you do, uh, you need 30. If you do uh, a master. So total, the total credit hour is 78. Okay. But here it is uh, I, uh, 70, yeah, 72. So there are different six credit hours. So here, six, two, uh, six, uh, 72 credit hour. Because we don't need the six hour for, for uh, the thesis. Okay. As I said in the master program, you need to take six research hours for thesis. You got what I'm saying? So we can save these six hours. So that's all what you can save. So you can save save six credit hours okay, for thesis. So it permitted. Uh, it permitted to continue program. The student will select a research advisor, uh, form a committee, and submit a program of study. Uh, satisfying the following requirements: the program of study have a minimum total of seventy-two credit hours. Uh, consistent of uh, course work and dissertation work, okay? So you need a, mi a minimum is 42 credit hours of uh, courses, okay? 42 credit hours. Uh, consistent of a minimum of six credit hours at 7,000. This is similar to PhD. So you have to take at least six credit hours of 7,000 level and the maximum of nine, nine credit hours at 5,000 level. So you can take it, as this is similar to similar to the master program, so we keep these two conditions for master and PhD, right? In PhD, you have to take at least, you have to take at least two seven thousand. For master, you have to take, you have to take at most or at maximum two five thousand. So we still can keep them here. Uh, that's also this is similar to the PhD six credit hours. Either go for grad course or go for uh, for research experience. So the total here, if you add them together, so this is exactly similar. So coursework, if you add them together, because you have here 24 and you have here 18. If you add 24 plus 18, you are gonna come with 42. Right here, 42. So it's the same, the same course load. So coursework is the same. It's the same. What I mean by same, taking master and PhD. Okay, it's the same coursework. The only the only difference is you just save, save six, two, two difference. Number one, you don't need to do thesis defense for master. You don't need to do that. Number two, you can save six credit hours that you used for master to do thesis. That's the only difference if you just go for PhD. Okay? A minimum of 24 credit hours of PhD. Okay. Uh, dissertation built about, yeah, uh, 24. Built upon the student's knowledge, making significant no more than nine credit hours may be earned in a particular semester. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's correct. 42. If you add 42 plus six, you have here 42, and then you have six credit hours here. They can be courses or you can go for research plus 24. Okay. So the result is going to be 72. So if you look here, this 24 credit hour, this is similar for PhD. So PhD, you have to do 24 credit hour, okay? But for master, you, you should have to, to do six. If you add them, so if you add them together, they are gonna become 30, but you don't need to do 30, just 24 like PhD. So if you compare between, so here, then let, let me put this way. The number of research hours for PhD program or direct PhD program should be the same, 24 and 24, okay? So the difference is gonna come here in the courses. Here, in the courses you have to do 42, right? But here in for, a, for, for a PhD, after master, so you have to do 18. So you are gonna take much more. Uh, 
everything else, else is the same regarding the uh, uh, re 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 residency, re regarding grade average is three, as I said, regarding comprehensive exam, everything as I mentioned for PG should be the same, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanna talk about here and also maybe interesting, maybe already some of you, uh, yeah, no, this is gonna be, Okay, so here what I want to see here, guys, is uh, yeah, you can you can get a direct PhD program and you can earn non thesis master in rowing. So when you graduate, after you graduate, you are gonna get two uh, two degrees. One degree is non thesis non thesis master, okay, and also PhD. Okay, okay. So, but I think let me see. All conditions I explained to you before for direct PhD should be applied. This number one. In addition. You have to take nine nine credit hours will count toward this non thesis master degree, and to do this the PhD degrees. Okay. Uh, so you have to take nine credit hours. If the department non thesis master requ requ requires a three three, three credit hour non thesis project, those uh, three uh, three credit hours can be counted as three credit hour of this dissertation research toward PhD. Okay. So. If you remember in non thesis, as I said before, you need to take three credit hours for project. Project is completely different from thesis because non thesis we don't expect much research from them or too much research. Okay, so here, so the good thing here, you need uh, the good thing here is if you take three credit hours for non thesis, this you're not gonna lose this. If you if you take three credit hours for, for, uh, for the project. The same three credit hours can be counted for PhD, so they are not they are not going to be on top, okay? So, but in this case, if you go this case, you have to do a project. You have to do a project, okay? If no project course is required for the department, okay, then nine credit hours of master coursework can be counted toward PhD, okay? So six credit hours of master coursework can be counted toward the PhD coursework. So here, I don't see. I don't see, you don't need, if, if you go for that which lead, you don't need, you don't need to take, you, you don't need to take more hours. But what you are gonna do, some hours are gonna, gonna be counted for both. I think so, if you see here. So here you have nine credit hours to be counted towards both, non-thesis degree and toward PhD. But the only difference is you have to do, you have to do a project, okay? And to do project, you need three credit hours to do that. And the good thing that this, this Three credit hours is going to be counted for both for PhD and non thesis. Uh, okay. Anyway, everything is counted for both. So it, it looks to me, or my understanding here from the policy, again, the problem non thesis is very rare in the department. So maybe I never heard about only, only very few cases that go for non thesis. But I think based on what's written, written here in the policy, uh, all what, the only difference is that you just, just you have to do a report. That's it. But regarding credit hours, the same credit hours here is going to be counted for both. You got upset? By this way, as I said, after you graduate, you are going to get two degrees. You are going to get non thesis, non thesis master, okay? And also, this can be in route before you graduate. So, in the middle, you can take this one first, and then you can get another degree for PG. Okay? Uh, for committee, advi uh, advisory committee, each PhD student, okay, this is for PhD. This is different from master. Every PhD student, advisory committee should have a minimum of five voting members, five members. Remember, in, in, in master, I told you the minimum was three for master. Here it has to be five. And there are some requirements here. This five, including your advisor. So your advisor is counted here in the five. This five, one of them must be from outside the department. One of them should be must outside the department. Outside the department, maybe some people take take uh, faculty from uh, math, from math, from physics, from computer science for sure. Something for sure has to be related. You cannot get so a faculty member from a faculty of, of nursing or, or a faculty of education or something unrelated. You can you got what I'm saying? So at least in my case, all my students will get people from computer science because it's very close to what we do. Okay? You can take from math or physics or 
on mechanical engineering if, if it is related, but it should be at least one of them outside this part. Uh, and at least the three, at, this is a minimum. If you if you want to pay, pay members, it's okay. If it's not a good idea, the more members you have, the more overhead, maybe the more problems you can create. So, so my advice to you, let's stick with the minimum. It's I think it's a good idea. So here the minimum should be five, okay? Um, So this five, as I told you, at least the three should should be from ECE, okay? And now one of them must be from outside, and the last one it can be from outside or can be from ECE, but at least the three from ECE. So here, at least at least one member should be from outside that month. The student is responsible for in, in, uh, for identifying uh, in consultation with the department chair with whatever. So you, you talk to you you talk to your advisor, and decide uh, the people you are going to select for your uh, committee. The chairperson of the department students are responsible for applying other faculty required, and they should sign. Uh, so once you decide the committee, they have, uh, you, you, you have to, you, they have to sign after you make the program of study. They have to sign on the program of study, and this program of study has to be approved by the department chair, and also by the college, and, and by the grant studies as well. If necessary, the advisory committee may be could share. Uh, failure to be, to, uh, to form a committee is a cause for uh, non-degree status. Okay. Program of study. A student advisory committee shall formally meet with the student to make an objective assessment of the student knowledge related to the field. The program of study should reflect such assessment. As a program of study based on uh, on, on this assessment must be completed before the end of so the program of study must be completed before the end of the second semester of enrollment okay for the degree or completion of 15 credit hours which whichever comes first i'm not sure if you remember but let me just i want to remind because you have to do it you have to do the program of study so let me go back i want to show you uh, i think i put a link here to program of study uh, Yeah, so this is that's what I mean, guys, by the program of study. You have to put here the classes you already took here. So here you have to put the school, the science school program of study. You have to take all the classes, the classes you already took, and the classes you are planning to take before you graduate. You got what I'm saying? That's why it's a plan, complete plan. So you have to put here all the, cl the classes you took and the classes you, you are planning to take, okay? And then here the chief person is uh, your advisor has to sign here and the department chair has to sign here the college has to approve it and then the grad studies has to approve it okay you have to this is very important you have to do it before the second uh, before, yes uh, I don't know if concentration. Um, it can be computer engineering and can be double E later uh, engineering. Uh, I think it should be this way, okay? Uh, because there is something else called uh, topic, the research topic. Search topic can be like something like cyber security, it can be hardware security. You got what I'm saying? More detailed, okay? Uh, so you have to fill it up. Is this what we call it? also here? You have to say how many seven thousand you took here, how many six thousand, how many five thousand? Okay. So if for program study, a program study based on the assessment, okay, must be completed before the end of the second semester, okay. Uh, a form indicating the day this meeting and the members of the adverts in, in attendance shall be transmitted to the dean. Honestly, regarding this bullet here, honestly, we do, we do it without, without we don't meet, actually, honestly, okay? So here it's saying we should meet and should talk, but actually what happens, uh, the student should meet with the advisor, okay, and then they decide what classes and when you are going to graduate, 
And then usually the other people just sign and approve it because the advisor can can make better decision, okay, with the student, right? So, uh, so usually the student here we should meet, but actually it may be virtu virtual meeting, but, but anyway, we don't meet, you know. All courses shown on the program of study, including background courses, which master courses, you can see here, uh, there is something called background here. So here, this are, should be the master. So even if, even if, you, if, even if you go for PhD and you have a master, still you have to go to the class for the master. As I said, you can transfer if, if you're coming from, if you took uh, some grad, grad courses in another institution, you can transfer no more than three, three courses. But it has to be approved for sure. A form indicating whatever all courses shown uh, on the program of study indicating background courses uh, are indicators of the depth and breadth of knowledge. So, okay. Each professor program of study must be approved by the student, committee member, department chair, as a college, as a graduate studies, there will be a hold to place on the student teacher if his or her program study has not been has not been filled uh, in the graduate study office by by the time 15 credit hours has been earned. So that's what I told you. You have to you have to do. It. Usually they come back to the student, tell the student you have to do it. You have to finish it, but you have to finish it before the end of the second semester. You have to do it. comprehensive exams and and. Uh, Candidacy. So the comprehensive exam, as I told you, should have two parts: written part and uh, and oral part. The written uh, comprehensive exam. This also only for PhD. The written exam will consist of several parts. Okay. Uh, this exam will test the breadth of knowledge, uh, uh, depth of uh, knowledge in selected area, and the ability to integrate knowledge acquired acquired from several courses. Okay. This examination must must be given after the student has complete. As I told you, just uh, to note you get lost. I told you, for PhD, there are two milestones. The first milestone is to finish what we call comprehensive exam. After comprehensive exam, you, you, you are elevated from PhD student to PhD candidate. And then the second milestone is the defense. Okay? So here we are talking about the comprehensive exam. Uh, must be. Uh, must be given after the student has completed at least 80% of the coursework, the comprehensive exam. Uh, however, the written exam should be completed before the end of the semester following completion of the coursework. Okay, the extension of, uh, of this deadline is possible with, the, uh, 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 with justification. A student desiring an extension shall make a request. Uh, I, we don't follow honestly these things, okay? So, uh, but anyway, you have to finish the comprehensive exam, but uh, we don't we don't fill up papers to do extension and things like that. All parts of the written exam shall be completed within a period of two weeks. Other details of this exam, including the format, the content, the method, the evaluation, the timing, everything is left to the committee. That's what I told you. So the format of this exam, if you take home exam or or, or I'm gonna examine you in, in course, I'm gonna ask you to solve a problem. I'm gonna ask you to write a program. I'm gonna ask you to make a survey, whatever. Uh, the format of this exam is left to the committee. All members should participate in evaluating the student performance. The written research proposal uh, should, as a minimum, consist of the very multiple research, research problem. Okay. The student should submit copies of uh, written. Pro this, this, this is. I told you the commercial exam should have two parts. The first part is written part, which is like the exam on the courses you took before. The second part should have, uh, second part, there should be, I told you the oral part. In this oral part, you should, you should have something written we call it proposal. So you should have, it has to be written, you have to give it to the committee. This proposal should, should, uh, should, should, uh, uh, should discuss your, uh, your research, okay? So what's, you have to formulate the problem, you have to do literature review, you have to tell the committee uh, what, what the research areas you are going to consider, what, what you have finished, what you didn't finish yet, and so on. So it has to be written. Also, you have to do a presentation. It has to be both written and also it has to be two presentations. Okay. You should submit copies. It has to be 30 days from, from the date of taking the final part of the exam and the Proposal defense will be scheduled shortly after that. Okay, the student will be informed the result of the comprehensive exam, both the written uh, on passing. If you pass, uh, uh, 
the entire committee, the students will become an official candidate. That's what they do. They're going to become PhD candidate. And normally, a student not passing any part of the committee exam will not be permitted to continue the PhD program. However, as a request of the students, the committee may agree to give a second chance. So you can you can have another attempt, another another chance, if you fail in the first chance. Uh, for it's not allowed to have more than that. So if you have only two ch two chances. Okay. Any question, guys? Here? So this is the first part of this course. The first part, just because you are new, new grad students, you should understand the catalog, you should understand the policy, you should understand what you have to do to get your degree, okay? So I think what I did here is that it was comprehensive. Comprehensive in the sense that I, I talked about master degree, I talked about uh, PhD degree, and also I talked about uh, 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 thesis and non-thesis, okay? For PhD, direct PhD or PhD with, with master. Also, I think I talked about something called fast track last time. Fast track, maybe some of you already has to track. Fast track means in the last, in the senior year, you can take some classes that count, that can, can be counted for both for bachelor and uh, and uh, master, so that you can get master first. You can you can stay here for five years to get bachelor and master. Okay, yes. Okay, so sorry. I guess it's because of this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I said in the master's courses you enumerated in the last class, you talked about a constraint on grad courses. Yes. Yeah. So, so you have a PhD um, students too. I mean, the 18 hours credit uh, you mentioned in the PhD. No, no, they are. Okay. They, uh, yeah, so, yeah, what I said last time, you for a master, you have four what we call break, breaks or four, four courses, four. You have to select three out of the four. Is that okay? Yeah. This is for a master. But but is this not applicable for PhD here? It's not applicable, right? You can take any cheat, right? Like this course, like this course is only for master, not for PhD. You understand? So in PhD, if you want to take from out of this 18, if you want to take some of the four courses, it's okay. If you don't want to, 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 there is no requirement, you should not take, uh, so if you don't want to take these two courses here in the IT, that's okay as well. Okay. Okay. okay, guys, so that's what I did here. Uh, so this is the first part of this course. Second part of this course is, yeah, so here, Here, I'm going to talk about uh, how can you do research, ethics in research. Actually, so I already posted this uh, uh, this PDF file. I posted on the course website. This is coming from my degree. Uh, my, my opinion, honestly, it's very useful, very important to help you uh, to understand what is research, uh, what are the eth ethical issues in research, and so on. Okay. So I'm going to go through it. So what I did, just I put. I, I put it in, uh, so I, uh, I'm going to teach all of this, okay? I put it here, I started to put it in a slide, so it's not complete yet, but at least I finished the first two sections. Um, it's a just, I just copy this because it's already very well written. So so I got, actually, honestly, I got most, most of the text here, okay? But yeah, some text I found, it's, uh, our, and I, add, I added some new stuff. But anyway, so here, so in this part, guys, I'm going to talk about several issues like, uh, here. First, I'm going to give an introduction. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the first step to do research is uh, literature, uh, literature search or literature review, uh, ethics and scientific publishing. Uh, how can you select uh, the format of your publication? Uh, you, I'm going to talk about there are different formats. There are conference paper, journal paper, letter, magazine. There are different formats. So I'm going to tell you what are the difference. And if you already do, do, did your research, should you go for conference or journal or magazine or whatever? Okay. Next one, uh, selecting. I'm going to give you some advice on how can you select where where you submit. There are too many journals. There are too many conferences. Okay, if uh, if you submit to the wrong place, wrong place here. I mean, 
they are not interested in your topic and your research okay so uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be accepted okay because they don't have expertise in your area so i'm going to talk about this then i'm going to talk about how can you develop your paper manuscript i'm going to talk about submission and peer review i'm going to explain this and then i'm going to talk after your paper accepted what what we usually do okay so after after we finish uh, this this chapter one of one of uh, the objectives of this course is is, uh, is also to give you some advice about uh, oral oral communication okay so i'm going to give you some advice how can you do if you go for a conference if you really publish the paper and you want to make a presentation what are the common mistakes okay how how can you do good 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 presentation and this is very important even if you go for a job okay and they ask you to do a presentation so communication skills are very important okay so i'm going to give you some advice on this and then i'm going to ask every one of you to do like uh, one presentation here and then i'm going to give give you feedback okay just to improve your presentation because this is one of, of the objectives of this course So, so here I'm gonna start here. So I'm gonna talk here. Uh, let's let's read what's written here. I like really, I like this. I like this PDF file. It is written with ex experts in IEEE. You know, uh, maybe some some of you don't know don't know what's IEEE. You know, there are different pub public publisher uh, for for uh, research uh, uh, research papers uh, like SCB. Uh, like Wiley, like IEEE, for sure for us, uh, for uh, for ECE, the most the most popular one is IEEE. Under so it's organization under IEEE, there are a lot of journals, a lot of conferences. Okay. So so the objective here of this chapter is we will show you how successful uh, authors structure quality work to improve their chances of being accepted okay you will find practical tips on how to select an uh, a, 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 a periodical or a conference okay organize your manuscript right in a clear way and uh, gram uh, gra uh, gra uh, grammatically correct style and and uh, work through peer review uh, i'm not sure if you're familiar with the system or not but uh, the, the system is as follows once you write your paper, okay, once you get some idea, a new idea, and you write your research paper, you have to submit to a conference or you have to submit to a journal, is that okay? Once you, you submit it, it, it goes for peer review. Okay, peer review. So what do you mean by peer review? Peer review means uh, usually the paper can go to two or three people to evaluate it, to evaluate this paper, okay? Uh, peer, peer means so these evaluators are researchers like you, like you, okay? In, in your area, that's why they call it peer review, okay? Maybe, uh, maybe a faculty member in, uh, in, uh, in New York, in California, in uh, Texas, in, or even outside US, you get upset, so another, another faculty member or another PGE, sometimes it goes to be this researcher, researcher in your area, okay, to evaluate it. And when, when, when they evaluate it, they give like accept or reject or minor minor accept after minor change or accept after major or reject. You got what I'm saying? And also most of what important importantly they should give you some comments. I cannot just say reject and then without any comments. That, that's not professional, that's not true, right? So if I make a decision, I have I have to justify what are the weaknesses, what are the problems. Okay. So the good thing here, even if it's rejected, you can get these comments to help you to improve your work. Okay, so, so what I want, I just want to, you understand what the work of peer. I, I review many papers of others, other people, okay? So this is a part of, and most of the faculty in the department, they also review papers of others. Uh, you will also learn how to avoid common mistake and ethical lab, uh, lapses. This is also very important. That will prevent your manuscript from being accepted and may damage your reputation, very important. So this is gonna be the second second section here uh, in, in the, so sometimes you do some mistakes. 
uh, and you don't know that they, they are wrong. Okay, for sure, if you steal someone's idea, for sure this is this is cheating, right? If you, for example, someone already published a paper in a certain topics and you steal the idea and you say, ah, this is my idea and I'm proposing it. Right? You know what I'm if it's already done before someone already did it, so that's cheating, right? Uh, this is a very clear, crystal clear case. Okay, but the danger, the danger here is. Uh, sometimes there are some cases you may you may think okay it's you know, I, I did I still you made a mistake or or it's a problem but you feel like I didn't do anything okay so like I'm gonna tell you I'm, I'm gonna be more clear here okay right if someone if you just take uh, if someone is explaining a problem okay for example, when the bot, when the load on the network increase, the voltage increase, explaining a problem. Okay, if you take the words of this guy and use it in the introduction, written in this paper, this is cheap. You got what I'm saying? You can explain the same thing, but you have to use your own words. You got what I'm saying? So cheating doesn't mean that you should understand. Cheating doesn't mean you you are gonna you are gonna steal idea, right? No, even if you steal words, someone words. Kind of so, someone can tell me, but this problem is not his problem. That's okay. But you can explain the problem like what he did, but using your own words. You understand what I'm saying? Not his words or her words. Okay? So, if you take a program and just put it in your paper, that it, even, even, even if you don't steal idea or anything, but still taking someone else's words, exact words, that's what we call paraphrasing. So, paraphrasing means. You can tell the same story, but this is this is the two points here. This is a certain story. If you if you if you just copy this story from someone, this is uh, cheating. But if you if you tell the same story, okay, but using your own language, your own words, okay, this is not cheating. Anyway, I'm gonna explain later in uh, next section about this. The other thing here we have. You will learn how to prepare, how to write, how to submit your paper, manuscript for peer review by, by an IEEE journal or conference or magazine. The development of your manuscript will begin long before you begin to actually write your first draft. So you have to do, <laughs> so I'm, as a researcher, first I have to do a lot of work before I decide I'm gonna write. So writing, writing this after you, after you finish your work, right? You, you can't say, yeah, let's write a paper now. Okay, no, you have first to see what the people did. You have to see how, what you can improve, what's your approach. You have to run the experiment to make sure your, your approach is better than the existing approach. Once you finish all of that, you can start writing. Uh, you should not write just for the sake, you should not write just for the sake of publishing or to uh, accumulate citations for your CV. Uh, if you do, surviving the review will be a challenge, okay? So this makes sense. I shouldn't write because I have to write. Uh, what should be done, you have first to get a good idea. Once I have a good idea and I can convince the people, and this is a part of uh, the skills you should gain. Number one, you have to get good idea, but that's not enough to have a good, good idea. Also, how can it, because at the end, your paper has to go to two, two or three, or sometimes more. Uh, my last paper went to seven reviewers. Seven, <laughs> okay, but minimum should be two. Anyway, but sometimes it goes to seven reviewers at the same time. Anyway, so so you have to, you have to write in such a way so that you can convince the people to accept it. Because if they don't accept, it's not going to be accepted. You know what I'm saying? So two things here. Number one, you have to get a good idea, and number two, you have to write in in a way that can convince the reviewer you did a good work so that they write the accept. So the other thing we have here, you should not uh, write just for the sake of publishing. Uh, if you do, I do, you can write. You can every day you can write a paper, but I don't think this is gonna survive the review. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna be accepted. As you plan your research project, think about how your how your work will be received and evaluated by your peers. You got what I'm saying? So I always tell my students, when you write a paper, put yourself on the other side. Okay. So assume you are the, the reviewer of this paper, okay? So 
if I if I if I, if I write a paper and the contribution is not clear, okay? If I'm if I am the reviewer, I'm not gonna accept it. You got what I'm saying? So try to think about that. when you send this paper to the, the reviewer, how you will think about it, okay? Uh, before you decide to write a paper, ask yourself these questions. Is this an important problem or is the data collected and analyzed of interest to wider community? I think this is also another important issue, important problems for cause, especially in, 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 IT, in, in ECE. You know, every day you have new, you have new stuff, new problems. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes when I receive a paper to evaluate and this out to review, and if I look at the topic and the topic is too old, okay? So before I read the paper, I really under the impression it's because if the people already have been doing research in, the, in, in this area for, for too many years, you got what I'm saying? So I should not expect too much contribution already done. That's, that's exactly how it is. Any research problem so should, should be, that this is a care for the publication and then it should be saturated, okay? So, uh, so also, yeah, you have to convince me it's important problem. What has been done in the past it has to be clear. Uh, does the research significantly advance the state of the field? Okay, that's what we call this. Also very important. That's what we call uh, contribution. Okay. Uh, I think it's the state, the state of, okay. it means the contribution, the knowledge. Okay. So comparing comparing to what the people did before. Okay, is your work make advancement? To the state of knowledge or not, okay? Because you need you need to compare uh, when you write any paper, and you can notice this when you read any paper, you can find that people are comparing to what has been done in the literature before. You got what I'm saying? Keep in mind, the research means you have to come up with the new stuff, right? Course project, when you do report or when you do course project, I'm not gonna ask you to bring a new idea. If you just have a circuit, you implement the circuit and it works, okay, I have it, I have it. That's what, that's what I need you to do, right? Same thing when you solve assignment in, in, in any course. I give you the knowledge and then I ask you to solve the assignment. I just want to make sure, uh, give it the knowledge or the knowledge you, you, you had it. Uh, can you solve these problems or not? So I'm not asking you to bring something new, new, new knowledge. Research, the other way, you have to bring, you have to bring a new knowledge, something new. That's why this is a very important thing. You have to compare, you have to understand, that's, you have to understand what is already in the literature. This is our knowledge. What is in the literature? So we have a problem, we already have some knowledge in the literature, okay? Number one, you have to understand what is in the literature. Number two, you have to come up with a new idea. That's why here, uh, next time I'm gonna start talking about how, this is the first thing to do research. You have to do literature, literature search, literature review. You should understand how the people solve this problem, okay? Uh, and then you have to find, uh, then you have you have uh, you have to find a better solution, okay? Then what what already what what is already said, okay? So to answer this question, you need a solid understanding of the re relevant literature, and this is the first step to do research, okay? Survey, survey or literature review, okay? And usually this should be a section. This, it has to be section in your thesis, a chapter in your thesis. It should be a section in, in any paper. If you look at any paper, you find a section is called related to work or literature review. Okay, so you have to say you have to tell the people uh, what has been done already in this area and what is what is the gap you found or what is the improvement you want to do comparing. So everything compared to what was already there. Okay? No. So see you on. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, see you on Wednesday next week. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna send you the link for uh, for uh, this recorded lecture. Uh, so we're gonna continue on this chapter. Okay, and once we finish it, I'm also I'm gonna the next step. Uh, I'm gonna talk about it, uh, as I told you presentation, how to do good presentation. One more thing, also very important, is uh, to write your paper. In the past, the people used to use Word, Microsoft Word. Now, no one is using Word because there is a more professional way using Latex. So you should also consider learning, learning uh, Latex. 
very important, okay, because for technical writing, you can get a much, much better, much higher uh, quality presentation of your uh, paper, even if your thesis is good, okay? It's not difficult for anybody, but you need to do it, okay? So see you on uh, Wednesday.